All right. Hello, ninth grade students. We are continuing our read of um, Into the Clouds, and I think that this expedition is about to end, uh, but it won't be the last one for K2. So we are on um, page 120. We're going to start kind of in the middle of the page and uh, see, see what's going on here. More than 7,000 feet down the mountain, Durant and Wisner took turns peering through binoculars at the slope between Camp 6 and 7. Before noon, they had seen three tiny dots move up the slope. Around 5.30 p.m., they saw three climb down. The mood at base camp darkened. The Sherpas had made it to 7 after what must have been an incredible feat of speed climbing. But where was Dudley Wolf? Wisner insisted it was nothing to worry about. Wolf would be standing at base camp in two or three days, ready to begin the trek home. Durance didn't believe it, and he began to mope around the camp in a noticeably anxious state. Several porters who had stayed at base camp to help them clear out told Durance he had been full of jokes on the march to the mountain. Now they complained, he barely cracked a smile. After a day of high winds and blinding snowfall, Wisner and Durant again peered up the slope, but clouds hid the high camps from view. The next day, too, they saw nothing. Finally, at 7.30 on the morning of August 7th, August 2nd, Durant spied a lone figure making its way down the rock and snow camp below six. By early afternoon, the figure appeared at in base camp. It was Saring Norbu, exhausted from a sprint down the mountain. When he managed to catch his breath, he told his story in broken English. After waiting out the storm, Kakuli, Katar, and Finsu had gone back to bring Wolf Sahib down. Saring waited for them all day and night. He waited the next day, calling up the mountain and hoping for a response. Finally, he gave up. He was in no condition to challenge the Black Pyramid by himself. And even if he made it to Camp 7, what would he find? Four men could not possibly survive two nights that high on the mountain without one sleeping bag and no food. Fritz Wisner, refusing to believe that he had lost four men to K2, made one more desperate attempt to get up the mountain but the rescue was doomed before it started. Saring was exhausted and terrified of the mountain that had swallowed his three Sherpa companions. Dawa had shooting pains in his chest and could barely get a sound through his throat. No matter how deeply Wisner breathed, it felt like oxygen never reached his lungs. The three men got as far as Camp 2, where a storm pinned them down for four days. Finally, they staggered back to base camp. Depressed and defeated, the remains of the second American Karakoram expedition left on August 9th and started the long march out from under the shadow of K2. By the time they left, Wolf and his rescuers had been missing for 10 days with just one sleeping bag and no food. It was certain Wisner would write in his first public account of the expedition that neither our brave Dudley Wolf, whose determination and ability had grown the higher he went, nor the three unforgettable Sherpas, Basang Kakuli, Basang Katar, and Finsu, who so gallantly had done their best to rescue their Sahib, could possibly be alive. They have as their monument a more beautiful structure than any man will ever erect. K2. And here's a picture, a more beautiful structure than man will ever erect. They didn't make it and they lost the expeditioners and the Sherpas in the process. Part three, 1953, the Savage Mountain. The third American Karakoram expedition 
So you're looking at a picture now and a photograph and they're sharing with you the names of this group. Top standing from left, Tony Streether, Charlie Houston, Bob Craig, George Bell, Bill White, an NBC reporter, Pete Schoenig, Bob Bates. Seated from left, D. Molinar, Art Gilkey, Lieutenant Zafir, he's a military interpreter, and Colonel Mohammed Atta Ula. And then the bottom, names not in order, were the Hanzu Porters, Gula Mohammed, Carol Hidayat, Hajibe, Muhammad Ali, Hussein, and Vilyadi. So a larger expedition and an appropriate title, The Savage Mountain. 11, no superstars. To Charlie Houston's kids, Penny, Robin, and David, it felt like Christmas had never ended. In the spring of 1953, boxes arrived almost every day at their house in Exeter, New Hampshire. Each box had a new curiosity inside. There were ropes and metal clips called carabiners, boots with rubber cleats and crampons with two inch metal spikes, fluffy down jackets and wool socks that looked like they'd been made for giants. Then there was the food, exotic food, magically transformed from its natural form into something else. For weeks, the Houston kitchen had been a testing lab for a very strange feast. Boxes came packed with dehydrated meat bars, a pound of steak shrunk to four ounces of sinew. Potatoes and vegetables and soups had been dried and ground into powders. With a little water added, the powders congealed into something that a person might want to eat if he happened to be stuck in a tent on the highest reaches of a mountain. That, of course, is where Charlie Houston wanted to be. Ever since news of Weissner's failure made it back to the States, Houston and Bob Bates had been dreaming about a return to K2. Now it was finally going to happen. It had been 14 years since Dudley Wolf, Pasang Kakuli, Pasang Guitar, and Finsu vanished on K2. Since then, the world had come apart and pieced itself together again. Three weeks after Wisner and Durantz trudged off the Baltoro Glacier and back to civilization, 1.5 million German soldiers stormed into Poland. World War II spread across the globe. For at least six years, no one climbed mountains except soldiers looking for an advantage over enemy troops. During that time, at least 30 million people died on the battlefield and in German prison camps. Entire cities were leveled by firebombs. It was enough to make most of the world forget the deaths of one wealthy American adventurer and three professional mounted porters from Nepal. But Charlie Houston remembered. Okay, we're gonna stop there and we will begin at the bottom of page 127 next time. Thank you so much, ninth graders. I hope you're well. Take care of yourselves. Bye.